All right, okay, good, 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 good deal. All right, hi guys. What's hi. going on? Hey. Who has questions? Do you have questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, what was it like um, when you were in the cell? When I'm in the prison cell? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a bummer. <laughs> I kind of want to stay out of that situation. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I got, I got hopes that my son's going to help help get me out one of these days. So. How, how, how does it feel like, like be passing on the torch? You kind of have been there, and then you started like a whole new generation of Flash fans. Yeah, it, it really is unusual. I was just, when Mark Hamill came back to uh, reprise his role. Yeah! yeah. Back from the set together, and you know, he just come from the set of Star Wars, so he was saying, you know, rarely do you get the opportunity, 25 years later, to come back, you know, and revisit uh, a project. Of course, we both realize that our job is to hand it off to the new generation, uh -huh. and uh, I can't think of a finer young man or a better actor than Grant Gustin. Not only because we're both from Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> we were both born in January. <laughs> and he was born the year I was doing The Flash. <laughs> but because he's just an outstanding guy. You know, I, I, when we were doing the season finale, which is going to blow your minds wide open, the last 10 minutes of our season finale this year, and I can say this because I'm unconscious on the floor. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me. But it, uh, it, it are some of the most mind-blowing moments. Uh, the thing that these producers, I promise I'll work my way back to your question. The thing that these producers are, do, are doing right is they realize that we, we got to have the adventure. we got to have you know, the fireworks. we got to have the fun. And we got to have the heart. So they got those three words written up in the writer's room and they try to balance it. And they balanced it so well with the father-son. And I think, you know, when they first said that they were gonna be doing a new Flash, I thought, well, they might wanna go one of two ways. They might wanna break with the old and have something completely new. I would have been fine with that. Then when I heard what Jeff Johns, how he blew up the Allen family. I mean, Emmett Walsh, who played my father, uh, was not, wrongfully convicted of killing Priscilla Pointer in front of a 10 year old <laughs> That kind of blew my mind, you know, when I was like, well, wow, that changes everything. And I thought, well, if they were to come with to me, that's the one I would want. Everyone was saying Jay Garrick, Jay Garrick, and that would have been the obvious choice. But when I heard about the father and he's in prison and Barry believes and has believed ever since he was 10 and even his best friend Joe doesn't believe, I thought that's the conflicted part. And I said, you know, and everybody, People would not go to conventions and it was finally revealed who I would play. They said, yeah, but we don't want to see you pass the torch. And I was said to everybody, you will get that. I said, just, I promise you, you will get that. It will be in the context of a father-son blessing, but you will get the passing of the torch. And I've had so many people write me and say, you know, you were right. And I think it, the producers were smart because when I, when I walk onto the set as Henry Allen, I bring having been buried with me. So that when Grant and I are having scenes, you know, it's not only Henry and Barry, it's John and Grant. You know, I told him we were shooting these uh, season finale. I said, you know, when I get to the line, the line was written, I'm in awe of the young man that you have become. I changed it to, I am in awe of the young man you are becoming. And I told him, I said, I said, you know, Grant, I don't have to act. When I say that, he said, I know. He said, I feel that. And that's why we were doing it. They had a reflection in through the prison glass. He couldn't quite see, see me as well. He could see a reflection. Of his, and he stopped. He said, I can't see John. He said, that's why it's so important for me to see you when we're doing these scenes, you know. So it's a, it's a real special uh, relationship. It's a special show. I knew that when we did San Diego Comic-Con last year, 180,000 people took over the town, and we premiered our our uh, our pilot in front of in Hall H in front of 7,000 people. We were oversold. Uh, I knew then that you know they're doing Constantine, they're doing Gotham, they have Arrow, they're doing Flash. Okay, so they're throwing a lot of shows up against the wall. At which ones are going to stick? And I knew that what differentiated us was that we were the optimistic one, we're the, the the hopeful one, we're the slightly goofy one. You know, and I didn't know if in the age of uh, zombie apocalypse and Game of Thrones, you know, if we would stick. 
But the day that we debuted, uh, one of our reviews said how refreshing it is to have a superhero, one of whose powers is optimism. And I thought, it's going to yeah. be us. <laughs> yes, sir. Joe, I got a question. Now, my friend Jeff Grimes and I have spent a lot of time uh, talking about uh, The Flash. And one of the things that uh, we all are so endearing to you and so appreciative is that you know the mythos, you enjoy the mythos, you embrace, you embrace it. And we just really want to thank you for that piece over the last 15, 20 years. Um, secondly, um, and, and Jeff being a, a huge Silver Age fan. So Barry Allen's important to us. Yeah. Uh, and, and we didn't disapprove of, of the Wally West era, if you will. Right. So I want to ask you, uh, a few years back, we were uh, really fortunate to have, as, as comic book fans, Ethan Van Skyver here. So Ethan and Jeff Johns collaborated to do Flash re help me out. Rebirth. Rebirth, thank you. Rebirth. <laughs> if you, are you familiar with that piece of work? Certainly his iconic cover where he's putting the boots on. I'm not, I wasn't okay. really familiar That's with it until they came to me and- that, and that was my next question. Yeah, when they came to me with, uh, when they started talking about the new show, and a friend of mine who worked at Pretty Good HBO, said, you know what Jeff Johns is playing? I said, no, I don't know what he's playing. And he was playing about the Allen family and all that. And then I, I started investigating the cover art and all that stuff. And we do a uh, sharper tone, you know, that he's given it. That's when I found out about it. People always say, were you a comic book fan growing up? And I wasn't. When they said to me, we want you to look at this script about playing The Flash, I said, you mean Flash Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get highly insulted now when anyone says that to me. <laughs> no. The <laughs> Flash. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and they say, well, did you go back and research? And I said, you know, Danny, Danny Bilson and Paul DeMeo, who I will see in L.A. this weekend because they're doing a 25th anniversary tribute at a movie theater in Los Angeles. Mark Hamill will be there. I'll be there. The producers of the new show will be there. The old show, the guy who built the original suit will be there. We'll do a panel. We'll show the two original Trickster episodes. What was the question? <laughs> I don't think I got lost. You just, you just went from uh, the, the rebirth of Barry. It was all about the rebirth of Barry. And when they came to you discussing, you know, here's where we've been, here's where we're going, and you just took it from there. Gone. That's all. Gone. <laughs> You're gone. We, we're anyway. following. We got this. We're following. All right. <laughs> yes. Whenever you were playing the Flash yourself, what did you do as far as that? That reminds me of where I was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is that, is that Danny, Danny, uh, Danny Bilson and Paul DeMeo did such a good job with the, the original Flash pilot story? Because I, I had no interest in coming in and playing, you know, Hugh Hollywood hero. But when I found out that, that Barry, in our telling in 1990, was the unblessed son of a cop family, his brother was the favorite son, but even said they had a really close relationship. He ends up being killed by a motorcycle gang. When Barry gets his powers, the first thing he wants is to be rid of them. He doesn't trust it, but then when his brother's killed, he wants to avenge the death of his brother. I was like, okay, I can I can wrap my actor's soul around that. You know, so I took everything that I needed really from their script and their knowledge. And the great thing, I was talking uh, last night, we were talking, and I said the great thing about this show now is Andrew Kreisberg, Jeff Johns, David Nutter, and uh, Greg Berlanti were all big fans of the 1990 version. The Flash is their favorite character. They're not, they're not producing mass entertainment for you guys to consume. They are writing a show that they want to see. Yeah. And, if, and, and if we all enjoy it, that's fine with them. <laughs> you know, but I think I think you feel that, don't you? I mean, they they I mean they come to you with an idea. When they got Mark Hamill to come back, I get this call from Andrew Price for man, if we got a surprise for you, it's so cool, you know. <laughs> so that's the way it is. That's the way the workplace is. It's real special. Awesome. Now, what was your question? So, what did you do as far as prepping yourself physically, and getting in shape for the role, and getting you know super hero shape? Was I think, well, early in my career, we mentioned Guiding Light, 1980, I, <laughs> I ran around in a Speedo and sang You Needed Me for a couple of years, that's Kelly Nelson. So I was working out, like, from the very beginning, uh, in those days, <laughs> I'm not going to tell that story. <laughs> uh, but they told me Bobby uh, Anton, the, uh, our designer, they were talking about the looks of different characters, they said, and this was 1980, mind you. So it was years ago. But they said, 
Well, with John Wesley, it's not so much a question of how to dress him as how to undress him. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but my problem when I got to the show, when I got to the show, was keeping the weight on. It was the same problem Barry in the story was having. Because that suit was brutal. I'd be in it for 30 now, I'm not whining. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to hear anybody who's been privileged to play a superhero get up and whine about how hard it was. Oh, the suit was so, you know, these are just the facts. I'd be in it for 30 minutes and I'd pull the gloves off and they would pour the sweat out. It was just hot. They had to glue it. They couldn't clean them. It sprayed with Lysol. Two for me, two for the stomach. Hang them in my trailer. It'd still be wet at five in the morning when I put them back on. Broke all of it. So there are issues that are, there's a, like a fraternity. A sorority, because it's men and women, you know, who have been, and, and we share, you know, what it's like to work in a suit. But um, then I've lost your question now. Jeez. <laughs> Coffee, did I answer your question? Yeah, it was basically just as far as, like, how did you... Oh, you know, so my said, problem, they, they, they right, so. it's before they had a gym. They now since built a gym on the back lot of Warner Brothers. We shot the original Flash in Los Angeles. We had a third of the back lot of Warner Brothers, and we were in different locations, going into the kinds of buildings that we wanted. But they built on one of the sound stages a weight room for me. Of course, it's very hard when you're being glued in, they're taking off the acetone, they're putting makeup on you, you know. But I would, any time, any chance I got, I'd go in and I'd, and I'd lift. That was the challenge, because I'd be there 55 to 80 hours start off 7 in the morning on Monday, we shoot till 10. We'd come in at 10 on Tuesday, we'd shoot till 2. We'd come in at 2 the next day, and shoot till 5. We were tending in the back lot at Warner Brothers to shoot day for night, and we'd be leaving as the executives were coming to work, and they'd go, man, you guys are crazy, you know? But uh, that's what it took in those days to get the show. the last thing you want to do is pump iron. Can I have to? You know, it's a little bit better now with the modern aesthetic. I, you know, I always argue at the beginning, you'll see the pictures at my table, which you can come by and look at. It's free. You know, you know, people will go by, that. you know, you can come talk to me. It's fine. I, as you can see, I talk. <laughs> but, uh, but now, what was I talking about? <laughs> Working out. Yeah, next question. <laughs> yes, sir. Have you seen the Trickster episode? Yes, I have, but yeah. I didn't know if there was any more coming up. Yeah, I think there will be. You know, of course, we all know Henry dies in the comics. Yeah. Yeah. He gets killed in prison, so yeah. that's always an option if I get right. too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Henry chokes on a ham sandwich? What? <laughs> <laughs> Those things have happened. But, uh, you know, I enjoy being in Star Labs. That was a different, that was a really to see right. Henry not in my crisis mode, you know. Right. And uh, I thought it was so, you know, when I met um, Danielle, yeah. who plays Caitlin, mm -hmm. when I met her, we were, I had come to do the pilot, we were all up in Vancouver, she came up to me and she said, can I have a hug? <laughs> <laughs> so the writers saw that and they wrote it into the script. Wow. That's where that came from. I said, absolutely, <laughs> I will always accept a hug from, you know. So that's, uh, there's, our producers are smart. Yeah, I, I like that too. Uh, and the only thing I know is Andrew said to me, and it, it's always changing, uh, but he said it doesn't make much sense to spend the first season getting Henry out of prison right. or have, to have him disappear. Right. And he said there's so many more things we can do with Henry once he's out of prison. Right. I was thinking he's got three dads. I don't mind you yeah. ignore this side of the room. He's got three dads, Joe and Henry and, uh, and Harrison. Of course, Harrison's kind of gone. <laughs> so I'm no longer a candidate. <laughs> I was thinking, who's the expendable one of those three? They can't keep three dads. And I was thinking, it was Henry. Henry's a hard surgeon. You know, Joe's a cop. He's in the center of the storyline. Harrison's Star Lab, so he's in the center of the storyline. But they say they got plans, so, you know, we'll see what they are. We'll see what they are. Yes, sir. Uh, how is it, as far as the success of The Flash going now with social media, where you did not have that 
at your disposal back in the 90s? Yeah, it was a different world back 24, 25 years ago because we, we started shooting in June of 1990 and we aired in the fall of, of 1990, as you know. And uh, it was a new way of telling comic book stories on, on TV. And so we were sort of starting something. We weren't, I was hesitant to do a, 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 a costume character on TV because I was delusional enough to fancy myself a serious actor. And, <laughs> and, you know, I wasn't sure that that would lend itself to it, but they, you know, so we weren't coming into a ready-made audience. We were coming, we had a strong following, but I, I talk about the difference in the two different San Diego Comic-Cons. In 1990, I went to San Diego, walked through it in four hours, signed a half a dozen autographs, and went back to the set. This last year, we premiered our pilot in Hall H in front of 7,000 people. 180,000 people moved in and took over the city of San Diego. It was insane. Jesse Martin, you know, who not experienced the you know comic book phenomenon before, he said, it's, "We haven't even been on the air yet. And we're getting all this love." So it was great. What I hoped for Grant, because we had the critical success and we were a hit within the industry. But what I hoped for Grant was that he would have with the role, the, uh, the, the popular success that we just missed. And I'm so happy to see that it's, 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 a, it's a bit easier. He's walking into an audience that, that's already primed, you know, for the character. And you can see it in the difference. You know, sometimes when I watch the old, the original, I, I can see my own discomfort sort of, whenever particularly I have to speak in the suit, not Grant, you know, Grant's hopping up and down on things, he's running around, you know, he's going to act in the suit, he can, you know, it's, it's just different. You know, he's also 10 years younger than I <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's a big difference. It's a big difference doing a superhero show, a superhero show now when it's exploded mainstream than it was then. Do you think it would have been different back then with The Flash if it had not been as dark and had more optimism like this one? I don't know. Because I, you know, I think if it if we had done as optimistic a show as we're doing now, ten years ago, I don't think the audience would have been ready for it. I think the audience now, I mean, we had a, we've had a real romance with everything having to be dark, everything having to be edgy, and it's still interesting. I mean, Arrow's a terrific show. It's the it's the darker show. I, I watch it. You know, but uh, I think people are, re are ready just as a society. We're ready for a little optimism. We're ready for a little relief, you know. Um, so uh, I'm not sure that us going, I think if we had gone any lighter in tone, uh, we would have been compared to the 60s Batman version. I think we had to go in the opposite direction, you know, and go dark and gritty um, at that time. Would you speak to the difference between the two parents and how we see the relationship with Barry? I mean, the two shows are so radically different. And the walls. <laughs> well, what's the matter, Barry? Emmett's <laughs> um, a legend. Listen, I had to work. I, let me just tell you one thing. I'm giving Grant a lot easier time than Emmett gave me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm on the set, you know, the one where Barry gets shot and he's healing really fast. Get me at the part we're about to do. He's like, what are you looking at? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just, I'm just preparing for the tea. And it was really rough. But I'll tell you when it changed is that scene in the cemetery when finally I've got these powers and I've decided to take them on to avenge my brother's death. And he says, Barry, don't fire a bullet. Don't fire your gun unless you got a bullet in the chamber. And here's this unblessed son, the geek son of the real cops work the streets family, who can do things, even surpass anything his brother could do. And he knows his dad would be super impressed if he could tell him he can't tell him. And all he can say is, I have the bullet. And from then on, my relationship with Emmett changed. It was suddenly we were on equal footing. I had earned, and the man's a legend. You know, he was dead, you know. And uh, I, had to, I had to earn, earn his respect. Of course, the two Henrys are totally, totally different. That was, he was much broader in his characterization of it, you know, and the relationship between Henry and Barry quite often is, we just try to meet as two people. And often we're just meeting as John and Grant, 
there's really no separation between the characters that we're playing. You know, he and I would be talking to each other, and you know, they'll say, "Okay, get in your place." If we're doing the scene, we'll continue our conversation. You know, we'll sit down. You know, we're there, and Brad and I are still talking about this one moment, and then they'll call action. We'll go right into the scene. There's no separation between how we relate 